Well, welcome to this special service. I am amazed at, uh, and delighted that so many of you in the building have chosen to stick around. And uh, thanks to everybody who's online for joining us in this. Uh, these, are, these are really awesome events, and we're not letting a pandemic stop us from doing baptism. The circumstances are a little different than usual. Um, we're not out at, um, at April Audie's pool uh, due to the time of the year and also due to the virus, so we're not going to baptize by immersion for the, probably the first time here at Hosanna. We haven't done it that way, but the meaning of the event is not in the circumstances. It's, uh, they, they're symbolic, but the meaning is still here, so we, we, we got a little bit of creative, and, um, and the meaning will still be there. Why are we doing this? Well, Christians have been doing this in every generation for 2,000 years. The guy who started it for oh, us in the New Testament was, was, was John, who got an appropriate nickname, the Baptist. John preached a message of repentance, and repentance is a word we keep coming back to this year. It means to change, it's a cha turn around and go the opposite way. It's a change of perspective. It's a different way of seeing. And then he invited people to come and be baptized to symbolize their repentance. The fact that they were, were wanting to be cleansed of the old stuff and to see things and do things in a new way. And then Jesus came along and made that new life possible for us. He himself was baptized by John, although he had no sins to repent of. He did it as a symbol of all that the new life, to all that the new life doesn't come through sacrifice or through ritual. So that baptism was a symbol. His truest baptism was three days in a grave. And when he rose from the grave on Easter Sunday, his resurrection made it possible for all in, who were in him to be raised to new life as well. And that's why he keeps talking about, as we did this morning in our main service, about taking up our cross and following him. It's an invitation to follow him into death and resurrection, to let go of the old and to live into the new. So that's what we're doing here today. We're proclaiming the death of something old and the birth of something new. Now, this may be a recent change in the life of, of, of our baptizer, Tizees. Um, one of them um, has been living in this for most of a very long life. <laughs> But uh, it's a symbol of what God has already done. As one of our baptizees said a few years ago, it's time to shed some skin. It's time to shuck off some old stuff or to indicate that we have. So for those of us who have already done this at some point earlier in our lives, for those of us who are watching, it's a time to remember this about ourselves. Something important has changed in us, in all of us who are in Christ Jesus. We've already been made new. Let's live like it's true. This means that there's no more separation from God, from the one who made us, because he now looks on us just as he looked upon Jesus when he emerged from the waters of the Jordan River. Remember what he said when Jesus came up out of the waters? God says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And for all of us who are in Christ, that's what he says when he looks at us. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. And it won't be just the two who are being baptized here today. He looks at all of us because he sees Jesus in us and because he honors the person that he has made who is us. So to those being baptized, God is well pleased with you. This is a good thing. He's pleased with you because he loves you. He's pleased with you because you've decided to love him back. And just keep doing that your whole life long. Love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbors. You love your, yourself. And let Jesus, who is in you, keep making you more and more like him. Today in baptism, we accept God's love. We get his love all over us, <laughs> like this water is soon going to splash over those who stand under it. And that's, it's just going to be a symbol of God's love pouring out, and it's going to get us all wet. And in his eyes, we are clean. We are wonderfully and beautifully and eternally clean. And then we have a story to tell. So... With all that being said, let's now meet the ones who, like Jesus, have chosen baptism as a public sign of their new life. Deb's going to introduce them to us. Well, our first person being baptized this morning is Gordon Cahill. Gordon is actually the reason why we're doing baptism this morning, and he's going to tell you about that in just a minute. But I wanted to share a few things about Gordon first. 
before he comes up here. I just want to say that this young man is a part of our youth group and has been for many years that Jared leads. Gordon is a has a kind and giving heart. He's sensitive. And Gordon, don't change that about yourself. When this pandemic first started, oh, can you believe it's been over six months already back in March when we were in lockdown? I was working from home and my phone rang and as it does a lot from folks here at the church and I looked down at my phone and it said Gordon Cahill calling me. I'm like, Gordon's never called me before. I, wonder, I thought maybe Gordon needed something. Gordon didn't need anything. Gordon was calling me to see if I needed anything. He was gonna to go to the grocery store and he wanted to make sure that I had everything I needed and if I didn't, he was gonna pick up the stuff for me because we were in lockdown. That's the kind of man that Gordon Cahill is inside and out. And so with that, Gordon, come on up. And Gordon is gonna tell you why he wanted to be baptized today. He's got an awesome story for us. So I was told to share why I'm being baptized, and just a fair warning, I'm a talker, so this might drag on a little bit. Um, okay. So, that was kind of close. Okay. So in July of 2019, my now ex-girlfriend broke up with me. That started me self-destructing all the way until I was admitted into Phil Haven, and that was in May of 2020. Um, after I got out, I went right back to it until one day my therapist broke the spirit of self-destruction over me. It was unfinished, though. My great-grandmother visited me that night. She's always had a way of making an entrance, even now after she's been dead for five years. She said to me, it'll be okay, just let it wash away, right before literal buckets of rain poured. And needless to say, I, I cried a lot after that. Um, the next thing that happened was a couple months later, it was in August, when I was deciding whether or not I was gonna stay with my dad or my grandmother for the school year. Um, it was a little rainy that night, and I felt like this little tap on my shoulder, and I looked behind me, and my dresser was glowing, and dressers usually don't glow, so I'm like, what's going on here? So I then watched the furniture in my room kind of in my mind. I kind of envisioned how my room was going to look, and that's where I was going to be at that school year. So I then proceeded to drag my furniture around my room for a half hour, actually it was an hour and a half that I'm dragging my furniture around my room so I could stay at my dad's for that school year. Um, the last thing that happened was at a youth event and three people invited me and my rule is if there's three reasons that you should or should do something, or should or shouldn't do something, do it or don't do it unless it's really dumb then just don't do it. <laughs> so I went. Um, the worship music started, and I was thinking about which guys I wanted to pick up while I was there. It started to rain, which caught my attention, and it went away, but because of how connected the rain has been with the past two events, I kind of thank God. I was like, thank you for giving me the little warning that something's going to happen tonight, and I just kind of braced myself for what was going to happen. Um, the lesson started, and the rain started again. Um, the guy, he began comparing Nicodemus to Zacchaeus in the Bible and how they came to Jesus, where Nicodemus came to Jesus in private, and Jesus said, the only way to see the kingdom of God is to be born again. Zacchaeus came to Jesus in public by making a scene and testifying and repenting. Also, just for context, it rained so hard during this time that this guy is speaking that the lights actually went out. It was a straight storm at that point. Um, the way he gave the message spoke to me because I for so long have been trying to strengthen my faith and I just didn't know how. And he answered my questions so easily. So I think I called my grandmother right after that happened. I'm like, Graham, you're not gonna believe what happened. And then I texted Tony the next day and I'm like, Tony, you're not gonna believe what happened. And then I met with Jared the next week and I'm like, Jared, you won't believe what just happened. So, um, that's what brought me here today. Um, this is kind of a little personal, but 
Do I still have anxiety? Yes. Do I still have depression? Yes. Do I still think about guys here and there? Yes. But with the power of Jesus on my side, it's so much more manageable. Where I used to give in to such temptations, I can now withstand it and make smarter decisions. For me, getting baptized is me making yet another step to live my life for God, by God, and with God. I started by repenting, I began reading the Bible, I started praying, and now I'm being baptized. So that's my story and the three reasons why I'm being baptized. And before I let this go, um, <laughs> there's a, another reason that I didn't put in there, but it just showed up in my Facebook memories. It's a song by the David Crowder band called Come As You Are. And that song just spoke to me so much that I've been through so much through the past year, through the past 17 years. I know that some people have been through a lot more years of really hard stuff, but for me, it's just been 17 years of just getting hit hard with a lot of things that I didn't even think that I would be able to handle. And with the power of God, I was able to handle it. And now I can come here knowing that I am a sinner and that I've made some wrong decisions and that there's still hope. That beginning line of the song is there's hope for the weary. And I've grown very weary and I'm ready to be rejuvenated again. Amen. Amen. We sing that song here. And I love the, Jared and Joanne are going to come join us. I love the fact that Gordon had this profound spiritual experience in the pouring down rain. Because this morning, instead of immersion, we're going to pour water on him. We're going to make sure he's thoroughly soaked. But it's beautifully symbolic of this, this experience in the pouring rain. And now we're going to represent it here. So let's give one of those over to Jared and one to Joanne. Gordon, because of the spirit of Christ in you, which you have testified to, and we testify to as well, mm -hmm. we baptize you today in the name of the Father. <laughs> <laughs> and the Son. <laughs> it's warm. It's warm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jared has, <laughs> and Jared has a word or two for you. Oh, Gordon, this is just a great time. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. Um, it's, I've known you since. Well, the first time you came to youth group when you were in junior high, and you were shorter than me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and uh, man, over the years, just. Seeing your heart for your heart and your desire to find yourself and say, who, who am I in this world and, and all the struggles that you've gone through. It's been an honor to, to, to walk with you through all that. And uh, I, I'm so proud of you for sticking through all the hard times, never quitting, never backing down and, and never compromising on finding who you are. And uh, this moment, I think, is a very, very special moment. Um, and I am. I thought it for a long time, but I'm proud now to officially have a new brother. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so welcome to the family, Gordon. <laughs> uh, man. Um, yeah, you might find it easier Please. to walk down the steps over here. Very good. Deb, how about our next one? Yes. What? Another young man. Yes, another young man, young at heart, Lyle Abbott. Mm -hmm. Lyle Abbott is 86 years old and has chosen to be baptized again yes. this morning. Yes. Lyle and his, yes, Lyle and his wife, Sherry, have and are beloved members here at Hosanna for over 35 years. That's really hard to believe, Lyle. And Lyle was first baptized when he was 18 years old. And over these last many months, Lyle has been feeling God nudging him to be baptized again. 
-hmm. And like Lyle told me this morning, yep, I kept putting it off and putting it off. But this time when we announced that we were doing baptism, the nudge was there mm -hmm. again, and Lyle's like, I'm doing it this time. And why Lyle wants to be re-baptized is because he just want to, wants to reaffirm his relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. So Lyle, it's an honor and privilege to be able to watch you. Lyle here is an Irish and Scottish dancing person. Yes. <laughs> he used to do that many years ago. He loves Irish and Scottish music mm -hmm. and dancing, mm -hmm. but he's had to stop a little bit of that because um, he is 86 years old. <laughs> And Lyle, it's an honor to have you a part of our congregation for so many years. Mm -hmm. And with that, mm. you're gonna pass. Okay. There we go. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> 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 yeah, don't mess your hair up. <laughs> You're getting immersed. We were trying to think of a way to, to do baptism by immersion, and we thought, well, it's, it, it's usually just laying down. Well, we'll just do it standing up. We'll immerse you. That's what we're doing. But we want to make sure you get thoroughly wet. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lyle, in recognition of the Spirit of Christ within you, which you have testified to, and that we testify to as well. We see the spirit of God in you, and we love you dearly for it. We baptize you today in the name of the Father. <laughs> and the Son. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit. Whoa, yay. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to leave you dripping for just a minute because Joanne minute. Has, I just want to say one thing. <laughs> Joanne has, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, no, while, I, while we were pouring the water, I was remembering the time that I, I'm losing this, that I went, I don't need this. I got this. <laughs> that I went, we went together up to the, the Scottish mm -hmm. festival and I don't know. Pouring the water over your head, I was remembering. You don't look a day over eighty. I mean, really. I mean, you. We, we're all changing physically, but the inside, your spirit's the same. The spirit that I saw, that aliveness that I've seen in you, since I was what twenty something years old, I think when we first met. And what a joy you are. Just thank you. Thank you for being so alive in Christ. And to reaffirm that, I'm just gonna, I'm just praying for you that that aliveness, that life only intensifies and gets bigger and bigger. The love that you have, the love that you've always had for our family, for my son when he was this big and you're talking Scottish swords with him and thank you for being you and the unique person that God has created you to be. And you know, this is it, we love you. We love you, Lyle. And if you weren't so wet, I'd hug you. <laughs> Thank, you. Blessings. <laughs> Thank you, Lyle. Bless, blessings. We had a third for today, somebody a little younger than Lyle, uh, about 11, uh, who unfortunately is in quarantine and can't do this. So we may have a, a, a quick little service um, for her at some point. But yeah. uh, today we, we have these yeah. to celebrate. It's kind of fun. You know, <clears throat> COVID, it's not fun in so many ways. So we have to find our own fun mm -hmm. and to find creative ways to be doing the sacraments of the church, you know, to do baptism, to be able to continue on um, with the Lord's Supper and with communion, with gathering in ways that are safe and honoring each other, honoring God, being able to live stream. Hello, everyone out there. Um, it just allows the creativity of our creator to flow through us, to allow us to, I, this is the phrase that keeps coming, you're gonna be hearing more about this as we move along here, and especially into 2021. We have got to remember who we are and live like those who are alive from the dead. That's who we are. More about that next week too. Yeah. 
Oh, you're going to sing Amazing Grace first? I thought you were going to sing No, you're all going to sing Amazing Grace. This is, okay, more creativity. Okay, I thought that was cool. Let's sing two verses of this. <laughs> Go for it, then I'll pray. Next up. Amazing <laughs> Grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. short prayer blessing. Eternal God, you have given your own life to these newly baptized ones, Gordon and Lyle. We give thanks for them whom you sought in holy love and called to this day. Inspire them with ongoing passion to know you and to live Christ's life in this world. Nurture them through your wisdom and word Form us all together as your people, one with you and with each other, through the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer and Lord. We pray all of this and so much more. And all the people of God said, Amen. 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 Amen.